Coming up ahead on GMC The Quest Week 7, we get you set for the special Autism Awareness Challenge this weekend in North Brunswick. We also go to the highlight reel where we will take a look at some of last week's GMC breakout stars, highlight one of New Jersey's fastest rising freshmen, and show off our best, most fancy footwork. We've also got the reaction of the year coming from Dylan Lugo's dad after the EBHS senior hit his first high school home run. Home run? Oh, shit. All that and more as we blow away our competition on GMC The Quest. Next. Hello, everybody. Welcome inside our beautiful and palatial GMC studios for another packed edition of GMC The Quest. We've got our share of strikeouts, walk-offs, homers, and we start with some magic. That's the magic of the swamp, where we begin this week's show by looking at the inhabitants of the swamp, Spotswood, going for their seventh straight win to begin the season in a Saturday morning showdown with rival South River that happens to be our featured game of the week. They may not be in the same division anymore, but you know you're going to get a tight game whenever South River and Spotswood meet. For Spotswood, it's Jackson Walsh on the mound getting a K to get things started. For South River, it's Julius Rosado, the talented freshman. He gets one of his own to finish the first. We mentioned Magic earlier. Check out courtesy runner Will Buchan in the second. He's a wizard stealing the base there. A three-run rally puts Spotswood up three to one. But South River battles back. Ryan Kurtz, RBI single in the third, makes it a three-two ball game. And the very next batter, Parker Lane. Parker Lane base hit in the left. We're tied at three. South River takes a 5-3 lead later in the third on a misplayed fly ball. But Spotswood battles back. All their runs on the day ended up being unearned. Tied it in the third and here in the fourth. Take the lead on a ground ball to second base that gets by the infield. 6-5. Very next batter, Luke Johnson. RBI hit. He was 3-for-3 three three on the day. Drove in a pair. It's 7-5. We mentioned Julius Rosado earlier. What an impressive showing by the freshman. Three for three on the day. Three doubles. This one comes in the first inning. Later on in the seventh, his final at bat, his third extra base hit of the day, gets a last-ditch rally started, trailing seven to five, puts him on third, second base. Again, you're looking at one of the top freshmen in New Jersey. Next batter after... After an out is Kurtz. Kurtz comes through with a base hit. It's all of a sudden seven to six. And could Sp uh, South River be pulling an upset? Of course not. Spotswood does not lose in the, in the swamp. Here's Ryan Paulson getting a key strikeout. And then Paulson, the stopper for Spotswood with two outs, gets the final out of the game. Fly ball to center. Spotswood wins seven to six. After the game, we caught up with Paulson for some sound, talked to Coach Fredericks on a variety of topics as Spotswood wins. Yeah, I know. I just, I have faith in the guys behind me. So I just get in there, throw, make sure they make the plays behind me. They're good. You know, we, we're rolling still. So just got to keep it going. Every game is close and they always find a way to, uh, to pull through. Yeah, it's, not, it's not the best uh, <laughs> health-wise, but, uh, you know, Listen, all you can ask for is that you battle till the last pitch of the game. From the first pitch of the game to the last pitch of the game. And this team seems equipped to do that. It doesn't matter who the opponent is. And, you know, you're always going to have, you know, rivalry games on your schedule. You know, it's, it's a non-league matchup, but it means so much to both towns that you were going to get a close game no matter what today. It was, whether it was going to be 15, 14, or it was going to be 2-1. So we were ready for it. I think we just, you know, we just outlasted them at the end there. And they, they, got, a good, they got a pretty good ball club over there. Uh, he's got an outstanding approach for such a young kid. And, uh, you know, obviously in, in today's, you know, the way the landscape is, most of these guys play together. If you're on the warehouse, you know, you know they all know each other. And, uh, you know, we, we had a plan for him, but he kind of like, 
I don't know. He kind of uh, he had his own plan for today, and uh, he's uh, he's a scary dude up there. As a ninth grader, uh, it says a lot about his character to get up there on the mound. I know that they got him out. We were able to get him out of a league game last week to get him eligible to pitch today. He took the ball, and he did a really nice job for the first few innings there. Uh, I have the utmost respect for the kid. He's, he's a dynamite ball player. Yeah, he's been our stopper all year. We, 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 we came to the conclusion that he was going to have that role within the ball club. Um, today, with our starter struggling a little bit, we had to give, give him the ball a little bit early, so we went a little... You know, Chapman 2016 World Series with it today, you know, extended him uh, into the fourth inning of work today. And he just, you know, there's again, there's no quitting him. He was, I don't care what he says, he was out of gas. But he just, you know, he figured out a way to get it done at the end. And, and again, he got us the W. It's, that's all on him today. Well done. Now it's time for our weekly highlight reel. Let's start it off with South Brunswick's head coach, Tim Sweeney, who picked up career win number 100 here in year one of term two of his tenure as Vikings head man. The Vikings beat Piscataway on Thursday, giving coach his milestone win, and we congratulate Coach Sweeney on the honor. Big week for our number one team, St. Joseph's of Metuchen, rallying from eight runs down to beat East Brunswick on Wednesday, and going 4-0 and for the week to stay at number one in our rankings. It was a huge week for Josiah Brown. The senior shortstop shown here, 5 for 10, a double. First two high school bombs, giving the Falcons a huge lift up and down the lineup. One more look at East Brunswick's Dylan Lugo. He'll be continuing his playing career at NJCU next year, but until Thursday, he had never hit a high school home run. Still love Dad's reaction. Oh, Big time swamp magic on Friday. Spotswood trailing Sayerville one nothing to the bottom of the seventh. Chargers load the bases, nobody out for Casey Comiskey, one of the best players in the GMC. What can you do? Nowhere to put him, and the commish delivers a two run single. Spotswood with a walk off two to one over Sayerville. And finally, we mentioned Coach Sweeney. He'll never forget win number 100, but win number 101 might have been just as memorable as the Vikings take down state top 10, 100 in Central in a big way, posting an 11-1 run rule victory on Saturday. South Brunswick is a dangerous squad, and this could be what gets them going. Now we come to a special portion of this week's show and this year's shows as we preview the annual Autism Awareness Challenge, an event that has impacted so many lives since it originated in Middlesex back in 2008. Now involving 40 baseball teams and 30 softball teams, it's one of the most eagerly anticipated weekends and months in New Jersey, featuring players from all around the state. We caught up with event founder, Mike Garlotti, who told us what the Autism Awareness Challenge is all about as the 2022 challenge kicks off at North Brunswick Community Park on Friday. Welcome back here to the Jersey Baseball Show. Today, we've got a special guest with a, an important and special event coming up this weekend. It's the Autism Awareness Challenge, the annual, one of the, uh, the premier events on the New Jersey baseball calendar. So we've got to, uh, to talk about, we've got Mike Garlotti. Mike, as you probably know, some of his many hats, he's the owner of the baseball warehouse in Middlesex. He's also a scout for the, uh, the Colorado Rockies and founder of the Teamwork Unlimited Foundation, which has put this event on since 2008. 
Obviously, a great weekend. So many important people involved. Thank you for coming on, Mike. No problem, Mike. Thank you for having me. Excited to talk about our event. Absolutely. So let's let's first, for for the you know benefit of the the viewers here, um, tell us about the Autism Awareness Challenge. You know, it's uh, this week, this year, it's this this weekend, April twenty second to twenty fourth, North Brunswick Community Park. It's a baseball and softball event. But you know, what what has you know what what are we who are we you know uh, recognizing? Tell us some of the stuff that we're doing to uh, to raise autism awareness throughout the state. And, and really what makes this such a special event. So I, I, 14 years ago, we're going on our 14th, uh, our, our 14th uh, challenge or event. We, um, my, I have a son who's on the spectrum. Um, so I kind of combined two passions of mine, um, you know, my family and then baseball. And, and our, our number one uh, goal is to get awareness out there. So we spend an awful lot of time um, with the players in this event and the coaches trying to get awareness out to the public. And, and we're just actually really using baseball as our avenue to do that. And now we're also using softball. So with 70 teams participating this year, um, spreading the word across the state and the different counties um, and, and the baseball players and softball players are helping us do that. Yeah, you know, obviously, right, it's, if it's just a, a series of baseball games, it's a nice event, but it's, you know, ultimately not what it's become. What do the, the players do to, to really spread the word here on autism awareness? How has it gone from, you know, not just a game, right, more than just, more than just a, a good game against a good opponent? To, to something that really has much deeper meaning? What, are these, what, what does everybody do to, to, to make sure that happens? Well, you, you just nailed the words. Um, it, it, we we are, are, are saying is more than just a game. These baseball and softball players are used, they're gonna play 26 games throughout their high school uh, right. season. And we try to make this a special event. So there's, there's a couple different components. There's a fundraising component to it where we ask the players to go around with puzzle pieces to their local communities, their schools, and try to drum up some, inf um, some funds for our foundation. And the puzzle piece will have their school logo on it. It'll talk, um, and on the back, it'll have 10 or 12 bullet points, both on autism awareness, um, the foundation, and where the money goes and has gone in the past. And then the awareness part, four or five, you know, bullet points on autism and, uh, and how it affects our communities, especially here in New Jersey. So we ask them to go to their homerooms. We ask them to bring it home and talk to their families. We ask them to talk to their friends um, when they're sitting at the cafeteria, show them the puzzle piece, drum up, you know, some excitement about the baseball game and then see if they can get some funds. And um, our players and coaches over the years have embraced it more and more each year. Um, and, you know, with these funds, we give out some scholarships. Um, we, we give it to uh, all kinds of different autism um, type places, special needs type places. And, um, and it's all around the state. So it's, it's become a great part of it. We, we asked the players to kind of get outside their comfort zone a little bit and to talk about it and embrace this event. And um, with the coaches support, they've done it. Tell us about the setup, um, you know, how the games are set up that, that, you know, this weekend at, at North Brunswick Community Park, a great host for the event. It's pretty centrally located when you look at the, uh, the entire state um, and any, you know, fundraising or any other opportunities that would be, going on on site if there are any so so the the event is at north brunswick community park they have um a quality baseball and softball situation there um they're not very far from each other they're both on the community park there's two baseball fields back to back um so the atmosphere is really really special um i think all the baseball people in new jersey can relate to what it's like when 
you know, you're playing in that, whether there are teams waiting to play after you or just leaving um, after you've done playing that kind of county tournament atmosphere or state yeah. tournament atmosphere. North Brunswick, Dave Rosenberg and his crew do a great job with the facility. Um, and, and we're able to, to accommodate a bunch of, you know, they have lights. So we're able to, you know, accommodate a bunch of games in a short period of time. How do people who are not involved in the event directly, not players, not coaches, you know, not one of those 40 teams, maybe parents or other community members, how can they get involved in this mission? You know, well, I, pre to go to I appreciate you asking that question. We, we it's free of charge to come out. There's a um, we have a table and a tent set up where we have both all, um, information on autism, how to get some help, information about our foundation, where the monies go, um, who we donate to. Um, we sell T-shirts um, and sweatshirts. Uh, for for donations and then um, we do a special thing where we, we pick a special person each year and this year we're going to be fundraising for a for a, a, a girl who's got some um, cancer problems and uh, we do a home run for so every home run hit at the tournament uh, we make a donation for for that uh, in that player's name to uh, to our specific um, girl who's going to get some help in, um, on the cancer side of it. Well, that's why we like the shorter fences at, in North Brunswick too, right? For sure, for sure. Everybody's got a shot at doing that. Yep. Um, obviously, we talk about it being you know, more than just a game, but the matchups are still interesting. And, and you've got, you know, and your committee has the challenge of, you know, 40 baseball and 30 softball teams. Um, what goes into trying to figure out the, the matchups? I know a couple of the highlight ones, you know, statewide would be, you know, Jackson against Middletown South uh, could potentially be a central group for uh, uh, title preview down the road and, and, and like a Red Bank Catholic versus a Holy Spirit. Um, how do you how do you determine the matchups? Well, the, the first off, the softball coaches are great. The, that is geared more toward the Middlesex County, and they're going to play more inter-county games. Mm -hmm. And we almost have a completely opposite approach in the baseball part where we try to get some north versus south and east versus west. Um, and we're excited about the, the baseball coaches have been great. Um, I'm humbled by their uh, their willingness to work with me and trying to put on some different, um, some different uh, games and crossover type rivalries. And, you know, this year we have some new teams in it um, that, that have been on a waiting list for several years. West Milford is joining us and um, Gil St. Bernard's. Those two schools off the top of my head have waited a long time to try to get in this. And because of some schedule conflicts, we had a few openings and they were able to jump in there. So we're looking forward to, we have some really good players, um, mm -hmm. both the 22 class, the 23 class, and I'm not as up on the 24 class yet, but they're, they're pretty good too. So we're excited to bring um, different schools, some really talented players and some great rivalries or, or hopefully starting some rivalries there. Yep. Now, obviously, at North Brunswick, it's it's really kind of, uh, you know, in Middlesex County, it's a, I don't want to call it a GMC event, but certainly that that's, you know, as it grew, I probably, I would imagine started as a, as a GMC event. You know, what does it mean to have, you know, some of the guys, uh, you know, the, the people who have been with you from the beginning um, in the GMC and, and really help this grow? And, and can you tell us about the impact that you know, those people have had on, on the event and the experience. Yeah. I mean, I'm a GMC guy. I, I grew up in, in that conference and playing there back in my day, um, which was a long, long time ago, but our <laughs> coaches are super. It started out as a GMC event. They've embraced it. Um, they help with the rivalries and the outside games. Um, Vinny Abene, Mike Lepore, Mike Murray, who's, you know, the last dance champ there. He did a great job with that, yep. putting that thing together. Um, Dave Marzano, 
those old time, I call them old time coaches because they've been with their schools for long times, so have been great supporters of the event. And, um, we're and gonna, with we're North Murray, an old time coach from now on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tell him he can blame that on me. And, and Mark Blevins over at North Brunswick and, and yeah. his people have embraced the event, which just takes a lot of, uh, makes us feel at ease. We know we're going to get those games in any way we can. And uh, their support, uh, the conference, um, Mike Petey running the conference over there has done a great job in helping with the scheduling as well. More than just a game, it's the Autism Awareness Challenge this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at North Brunswick Community Park. Mike, we certainly appreciate all the work that you do and you've gotten everybody in the state to uh, to get involved and make this uh, one of the events that really stand out, not just New Jersey wide, but but you know, well beyond that. So we appreciate you taking time with us today. Thanks, Mike. And I can't thank you enough for what you do and, and how you uh, promote baseball, both college and high school baseball in New Jersey. You do a great job and, and can't thank you enough for having me on. We appreciate it. Our guest again, Mike Garlotti, Autism Awareness Challenge. We hope to see you out at North Brunswick this weekend and look forward to catching everybody next time on JBS. The Home Run Challenge is a very popular incentive to our game day festivities. Every player who hits a home run during the weekend games will sign their name on a banner that has been specifically designed for the charity we have chosen for the year. The more home runs hit, the more funds will be given to the charity. This year, we have unanimously chosen Madison Luber. Madison is a 17-year-old non-verbal young lady who has autism and is currently fighting a non-germinominous germ tumor. This is a highly rare malignant brain tumor in the pituitary gland. Madison has had to endure months of chemotherapy and radiation treatment to help shrink her tumors and stop them from spreading. We have chosen Madison to be this year's home run hero so that we can help her continue to fight like a girl. No changes at the top, but plenty of movement at the bottom as we look at this week's Super 7 rankings. The rankings brought to you by Baseball U North New Jersey. That's unorthnj.com. Baseball U North New Jersey, providing the serious player with all the tools they need to play at the next level. Let's get right into it. At number 7, Woodbridge drops a few spots but stays in the rankings following a uh, tough week. Number 6, Middlesex, the always their group one challengers um, staying uh, in the rankings. Number six, light week in the GMC this week, but certainly getting ready with some out of league tune up. South Plainfield moves in at number five, five out of six for Coach Scott Glickenhouse's crew. Number four, Spotswood. The Chargers keep rolling along in the swamp. They're up to number four. They've got a battle with Woodbridge in the white division this week. Number three, East Brunswick lost a couple to St. Joe's. We're not going to drop them for losing to number one, but a very tough two-game set here this week against South Brunswick. South Brunswick moves into the honorable mention category. The Vikes need another good week to get into the rankings. Certainly the most dangerous squad in the GMC not ranked after putting away number or state top 10, 100 in Central. And our one, two stay the same. St. Joe's Metuchen, number one. Monroe, number two. They square off this week in a two-game series that figure to give us a clue about what's in store the rest of the year. That's our look at this week's Super 7. That's all the time we have for this week's show. We hope to see you at North Brunswick Community Park when we're there Saturday night. Thank Mike Garlotti for sitting down with us. And remember to check out the Teamwork Unlimited Foundation website all throughout social media. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you out at the field.